All right, we're down at the camper today. I'm getting excited. It's about the uh, start of the camping season again. Um, but just uh, knocking off some items uh, on the maintenance list uh, that I do, I've done every year. This is uh, gonna be a two year, a little over two year review of this Puma toy hauler. Um, this is what I use to get the Razor back and forth to Windrock and wherever else that I may be riding at. Um, we haven't really done a lot of camping in it at, per se without the Razor. Uh, I plan to, uh, but it's really comfortable with, you know, as a toy hauler or as a camper. But anyway, I'm going to try to go from front to back, uh, kind of describe some things that I like, some things that I don't like. Uh, the don't like list is very short and it's really nothing functional. Um, all in all, this is probably the best, I, I'll venture to say this is probably the best value uh, out on the market that I've been able to find. Uh, if you've got a Razor, um, it's got a uh, 12 foot 6 garage, uh, you really can't find anything with a 12 foot 6 garage in this price range. Uh, it has just what you need, it's comfortable, and the interior is really nice. Anyway, I'm going to get started from front to back. Uh, I'm going to go over, over everything about this camper that I know um, have, have, after owning it uh, a little over two years. Um, and uh, we'll get started here at the front. Uh, it has a standard, uh, this is what it comes with, with Lippard. Uh, for those of you that are wondering about setups, um, that's what my whole pattern is set up currently. Um, that's what I had on the 2500 and I use the same setup on the 3500. And I've got another video, I'll try to put a card to it in this video of how I set that up. Um, but it basically, you end up with, uh, you know, approximately average out about nine inches uh, between this and the bed, uh, which is a really good value to have. Uh, this toy hauler is tall. Um, uh, it's, it's way off the ground. It's got plenty of clearance. Um, I've got a pretty steep grade that I go up and uh, really don't have any problems with it dragging or anything other than the tail end, then I'll go over that. Up front here, the only thing that I do not like, you can kind of see those streaks and a lot of that will wash off. At the very top of that, this has been a problem on all of the, uh, a lot of the forest rivers that have this brown uh, nose, is the uh, brown phase, there's not a lot of UV protection. Uh, it really doesn't bother me that bad. Um, I just wax it every year and it, it ends up looking okay. Um, but a lot, a lot of people end up having to have this resprayed. Uh, that seems to be the fix. Uh, if you get another your front put on, it'll just kind of do the same thing. So what a lot of people do is they just order a new decal and have an automotive shop spray this. This has been sitting pretty much all winter. Um, as you can see, most of that is just coming off. The docking lights are pretty nice. Those are the big LEDs that are on the front. There's another small light over there that you can turn on. There's kind of a mix. Uh, there's a few of these lights that are not LED. Um, that one being one of them. Uh, and then the rear lights on the very rear are not LED. Everything else on the on the camper's LED. Jacks, I've got no complaints. One thing that I've found, um, I usually try to run these jacks not out as far as I can, but I definitely don't want to short stroke them. I've found that if you just barely let the jack out, um, it, it does a couple of things. One, the trailer's not as stable. And two, uh, if you need to have more up and down motion uh, to get hitched up, you can uh, cut yourself short there. So I usually run them down quite a bit and then put the jack legs down the minimum amount um, just a, as a pointer. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's probably a pretty common thing, but the further you run those out, the stabler the, the camper gets. Um, it has a storage for your drain. Um, I, in my particular case, that actually did not work for mine. My drain's too long to fit in that tube. Up here, you basically have two compartments. One's your battery area. I keep all my blocks. Not a lot electrically to these things. I don't really have a lot of electrical requirements. Usually I'm either on the generator or plugged in at the campsite. That's pretty much this is just running the jacks and uh, you know, running the camper when I don't have any power, which is very rare. Um, that, I've only got the single battery that's in it. I have had to change that out once already in the two years. Um, this jack leg here is really easy to get to. And then there's this generator enclosure. I know a lot of people take that out. Uh, I didn't. Um, I do store my gins. You can kind of see them through 
the uh, thing here, I've got this locked. I'm not gonna unlock it, but basically it's just a square box. Uh, in behind here, I've got two of those PowerMate generators stored in here. And then uh, all the accessories that go with the generator, the uh, 50 amp uh, plug for the parallel kit and some lithium grease for the uh, fifth wheel. Uh, this is a solar charge. And again, you know, a lot of people confuse. This is only 10 amps. So this would be good, like if you wanted to have this to maintain the trailer. Um, I don't use it. The driver and passenger side compartments are the same. Uh, they both have a 30 pound tank. Uh, mine is on the uh, passenger side. You have that selector valve and indicator. Pretty standard stuff. Um, these aren't too bad to get out. You do have to kind of uh, pitch the tank up and pull the lower side out. The under storage, um, obviously it's not as spacious as one of the larger units, but it's got a lot of stuff in it. It basically goes uh, from this back corner back here up to about right here. Um, and go, you know, it's, it's all, all the way full through. So in here right now, I've got uh, four chairs, a blanket, a bunch of tooling, scotches, uh, water on the other side. I'll show you that here in a minute, but um, I've got all my sewage uh, stuff over there. But I really haven't run out of storage. There's actually quite a bit of storage right there in that uh, center section. Um, one thing to note, you can kind of see the construction. Um, if you had to add something in this toy hauler, it wouldn't be a big deal. It's wood. Um, and all of the fixturing and water pipes and everything are are exposed in this uh, in this bay, so you can kind of get to a lot of the uh, appliances. Same 30 pound tank, same deal about getting it in and out. Um, this just has a hookup. It does not have the any kind of switching or any additional hoses. Um, if you wanted to add a grill hookup, um, it's directly underneath on the other side. They've got cast iron pipe that comes out with a nipple that you could uh, add one. Just for anyone interested, uh, this is a 2017. Uh, I think they've upped this a little bit in the newer models, not by much, but that's the gross vehicle weight on the trailer. Just kind of give you a shot. I really do like the windows on this. They work really good. All of them uh, are kind of identical in operation. Another thing that I'll probably end up replacing are these. I would think they would have broke by now because um, they're pretty flimsy. They're just plastic. Uh, I, I did buy some spares. But, you know, two and a half years, they still work and they haven't broke, so I really haven't had to mess with them. This is the other side of the cargo area. Um, as you can see, we've got quite a bit of stuff in here. Um, plenty of room. The uh, water connection, I think on some of these, have an outdoor shower. And they have run uh, the cabling for an outdoor shower. And, it, you know, they've got this set up. This is a spray adapter, which it's pretty hard to find that adapter, but I found it on Amazon. Uh, and this is your city water connection. But what you can do, um, you can actually, uh, you can get to the back side here. If you wanted to do an outdoor shower and yours didn't come with it, it'd be pretty easy to do because they have run hot and cold uh, all the way to this location. Uh, my particular unit did have the uh, 50 amp service. So I'm good to add another air conditioner if I wanted to. I probably won't. Um, the climates that I'm normally camping in, the one air conditioner has done, done fine. I like the tires and wheels. Uh, to grease these, really easy. You don't have to actually take off the center cap. You just pop this out and then pull the rubber boot out. And it's got basically a standard through spindle. The uh, gray and... Uh, black tank main gray and black tank are there and you've got another, another additional gray tank here on this end uh, all these light all these lights the marker lights everything are led um, this does have a fuel station um, it works really good like i've said in past videos i haven't had any issues and the way that i've kind of kept it cleaned out is every so often one i drain it completely and then when it does have fuel in it i'll kind of just come out every once in a while and uh just pump fuel from here to here just to keep that pump moving and that's worked out really well um, again here's the rear windows and these work really good especially when it's hot um, you can open these up and basically create a kind of a draft effect through the whole camper uh, especially if you cut on the fan i've never used these uh, but there's basically a dish hookup 
cable TV hookup back here in the rear. <clears throat> I will say the door, the rear door, um, rock solid. I really like it. The only thing you got to be careful of, you know, obviously you want to make sure that that's level when it lays down. Uh, just to make sure that you're not uh, putting undue force on the on the on the door assembly itself get it twisted up but it's uh one person open one person closed the springs have probably too much force it still sits about six inches off the ground um, unless you press it down um, one thing i will say i did move my tag you can see there the old tag mount and i moved that to the bumper because that was dragging and the reason it drags is coming out of here sometimes those are supposed to be triangles but they're not anymore um, just because i had those are not real beefy those are supposed to i guess make noise but you can't hear it from the truck um a spare tire it rubs every once in a while um, i've considered you know just taking it out and putting it in the garage uh, but thus far it really hadn't been a problem you can see the uh, jacks those are electric and i'll show you the controls for it this works really well it's basically extend and retract And that's it. Um, it. It does really stabilize the trailer, especially if you have a guest in the back. Um, one thing I do really like about this toy hauler, um, over other ones I've seen, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the slide out where the awning is. And this one, uh, you know, it obviously only has the one slide out and it's on the opposite side. So you basically end up with this full awning over both doors of entry and exit, which is really nice. Okay, we're, we're up in the garage now. Um, it does come with fire extinguishers, one back here and one in the front. Um, this, to my understanding, is rigged for a washer and dryer. And there's plumbing that comes up in that wall. Um, so you could, you could actually put a washer and dryer here, which even with a razor, that would fit and still have plenty of room. Um, you can kind of see, it's a little dirty back here, but you can kind of see where the razor sits. The rear tire is about right here on my 1000S. I've still got probably two and a half feet at least. And that's leaving a foot. You can see where this stops. Maybe a little over a foot. So there's plenty of room in here. Um, tie down wise, I'll do the crisscross pattern up here. Cable TV. There's a backer here to screw into. Um, I do really like the bed setup. Um, I, I don't know how well this is going to come through on video, but it's really tall. Uh, my razor will fit in here. And that antenna that's on the top that's about it comes about 12 inches above the roof line actually just barely catches that uh, that bed so I've got plenty of room even with larger tires uh, to do more and if I had to um, you know it's really easy to just take one of these beds out and that, that'll give me almost another foot of room if I ever upgrade in the in the future um, it's gonna be really dark back here I'll try to get some light going two lots back here um, which is really convenient if you're in the bed if you want to read or something um, but there is a screened in area um, I've never unrolled that uh, I don't spend a lot of time back here once I pull into camp uh, other than to get tools or you know what have you um, but I have had guests stay back here and everybody said it was really comfortable the beds are really comfortable as well because they're they're very large uh, does come in this nice cabinet it's got a, uh, a lift area up here uh, where you can you can put something up there. I, I usually keep something very soft because sometimes it falls out, but they're relatively deep. Hold a lot of the stuff that I that I use with a razor. Um, the bed controls are really easy to use. Standard Happy Jack stuff. Um, and then you got the vent, and you can also put an AC in it, and it's pre-wired for it. Um, so when I was saying about value, uh, I, you know, I'm just going to tell you how much I paid for this. Um, I, out the door, it was about twenty-eight nine, and that's tax, tag, title, everything, for a brand new uh, fifth wheel toy hauler. I did not buy it at a show. I bought it in the off season, and um, I, I, best I can tell, I got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, so value wise. Um, for what this has this is probably one of the best values out there uh, right now the slide is in and i still have enough room uh, 
and you can make it around this corner here without any issue get some light on in here um, I have another video where I go through a lot of this stuff I'm gonna try to more focus on issues uh, that I've had which are very few which is uh, basically that front cap slides work great the windows work great uh, I did not have to take this camper back for any kind of maintenance um, you know and I'm, and I'm going on two and a half years so let's wait for the slide to get out okay so this is your living area um, you know it's minimalist it's comfortable especially if you've got two people which is usually what I have um, this folds out to a bed there's a ton of uh, storage underneath here um, there's a little access hatch I can actually store that stove up underneath there uh, fridge uh, you know this is a re really good fridge it's not huge it's just probably the right amount of space uh, for you know a week camp trip uh, which is usually what I'm doing as far as storage goes um, I we just can't use it all I mean we have kind of our stuff broken out here into uh, shells and there's just tons of room um, the upper part here we put less used stuff up there um, I do I probably saw it in the video but I have a step stool that I keep in the camper just so I can get up to these areas but just in the kitchen alone there's tons of uh, cabinetry uh, to store stuff uh, and then you have this under storage here and then this this folds out to a bed uh, mine did come with the uh, microwave and oven uh, I think I've used the oven once maybe to make some brownies that's about it uh, the countertop of the range is one of the glass flip ups this is a normal Suburban uh, one issue that I did have shortly after I bought the camper uh, this lot went out um, and I did I did find a LED version on Amazon and replaced it and I haven't had any other issues with it um, and this took me a little while to, to find what light bulb it actually took uh, kitchen counter usually uh, I don't use this table but there is a table and it's stored up underneath the uh, in the bedroom underneath the bed uh, but it you know it gives you a whole nother set of counter space if you need it like I say I don't use it a whole lot um, no problems running the Keurig the microwave whatever on the generator or from power so they've done a good job about keeping this power uh, circuits in multiples that way you don't kick a breaker or something while you're running stuff which was really nice you've got a little bit of storage in here behind the sink and I usually keep like grill things stuff like that here all the plumbing is accessible I don't know well that's gonna come through on video but it's really it would be really easy to work on the sink um, there is storage up underneath here that you can get to from this and this is uh, this is where they have the injection system for the antifreeze which makes it really easy to uh, winterize this camper and you've got a little storage here as well so overall tons of storage the uh, breaker box is there it's pretty easy to get to um, I really do like these uh, all the windows have it um, it's basically the the pool style shade Um, those are pretty much a must, especially if you're riding at Windrock at night and you're sleeping during, you know, daylight hours. <laughs> um, if it's really hot, uh, usually folks ride at night. Uh, but there's lots of light in here. There's the main light switch. And then there's uh, a lot over here over the kitchen sink. And these two lights to light this area. Again, even more storage. Um, pretty deep and open. And like I said, I love the windows. You just unlock that and that whole window will slide over. Okay, we're going up into the bathroom. Uh, actually, let me just hit on this TV and Furion system real quick. When I got this, this wasn't hooked up uh, to where it would actually use a sound bar. I had to kind of finagle and read up some directions uh, and buy a cable. Uh, but this all works now. The only thing I don't like about it, the sound bar is DC. The TV is an AC only. Um, so what I do, uh, that's one of the reasons that I bought the inverter style jump box. Uh, at night, when I don't want to run a generator and I'm dry camping, I just set this here, plug the TV in, and I can watch TV off the battery power. 
Um, I'll just go ahead and kind of go through these. These are big, big cabinets. Um, tall. Uh, this is as high as I can reach. Um, so, I mean, you have to have the step ladder to get into there, but um, we don't use this upper one a whole lot. It does have a really nice uh, coat rack to keep a little vacuum in here and things to keep the floor clean. Um, and then there's more storage here. And as you can see, a lot of these bins are just empty just because this camper has so much storage. This this is the bathroom. This is the number one reason I bought this camper. Really tall ceiling, full height shower, and you don't your head is not in that bump. Uh, this is this is me reaching all the way up, and my hand just just touches the ceiling. If I if I go up on my tippy toes, so um, a lot of room in here. Uh, I can I can basically take a shower. I'm I'm five eleven, and I've still got I could be a foot taller, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. Uh, I haven't had any problems with any of the plumbing. You know, keeping the same theme. Huge storage areas. Uh, there's plenty of room to keep stuff in here. Uh, even more cabinetry space underneath here. Nice sink. There's plenty of room to get dressed in here if you want. And then a big, you know, medicine cabinet. Um, this basically has your fan and your light control for this room. Really, the, the sunlight in here just comes through continuously. That light, I never really turn on this bathroom light. Uh, one of the things I, you know, another little nitpick thing. This door doesn't have a stop, so we ended up installing something to catch that doorknob. Um, especially if the camper's not exactly level, this door will come out and actually hit. And this is the, uh, the bedroom. Nicely sized. Um, you can walk all the way around the bed. It's got uh, nice storage underneath these little shelves. Tons and tons and tons of clothes storage up here. And those are deep. Those go all the way back against the uh, fifth wheel wall, which is really nice. Um, the whole bed does tilt up. Um, that is another problem that I had. The hinge over on that side that came out of the wood, um, I ended up uh, just making another piece of wood, screwing that in and screwing the hinge back in to reinforce it. Um, this bed doesn't come up super easy. It does now because we've used it quite a bit, but um, it basically folds up on gas shocks. It's really easy to let up and down. And it's got a lot of storage underneath. That's the table that I was talking about. You can kind of see there those hinges just screw into the wood. Um, that one has a, another piece of wood and a piece of glue and a couple of screws to reinforce that. Um, and usually where you have your trouble is going down. You want to make sure it kind of goes down very evenly. And uh, there are receptacles on both sides of the bed. Uh, this does have another backer for a TV. Uh, I haven't installed one. The rotatable antenna is there. Um, I, I probably will install a TV in here just for late night viewing. Um, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, so, all in all, let's see, it's probably close to two and a half years. Um, haven't had any actual mechanical malfunctions of the camper. Two and a half years. Of camping, uh, dry camping, and uh, campsite camping with full hookups and no issues. Uh, again, this is a, they have several models of this. They have one that's larger now. Um, this is a 373 uh, QSI. Just kind of give you a look of the outside with this slide out. Out. Um, my particular unit is, uh, you know has the winterization package on it so it's all covered underneath um, which has been really nice um, and the slide out system has always worked and it's very easy to uh, maintain I basically just keep it clean uh, really the maintenance wise you know all I've really had to do is I, I grease the hubs every season uh, try to wash the roof twice a year uh, there is a, a outdoor speaker 
Um, this is pretty hard to find. I know I talked to some folks that actually have this design and you can order this, but apparently it's really hard to figure out which one to order. But it has uh, cable TV hookups out here as well. And you can move that TV to the outside. And this is another zone on the, uh, the entertainment system. Okay, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you have any comments, uh, ideas, if you have one of these, uh, or if you maybe you found another value uh, fifth wheel, uh, be sure to you know just drop a line in the comment. Sometimes, especially if you leave a link, it'll go into review, and uh, you know if it's something appropriate, I'll I'll, I'll approve it. But um, I'm interested to in see what other people have, uh, especially for you know just kind of you know three four day camping uh, with the razor. Um, I'll probably be back in the market again for a toy hauler, I don't know, in the next three to four years. Um, and it's just kind of interesting to see what's out there, maybe what's come out on the market since I bought mine. Uh, it's been about two and a half years. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot change other than it seems the garages are getting longer. Um, and that'll probably be a lot to do with the, the razors keep getting bigger. Um, anyway, I hope you liked the videos. If you have any questions, uh, drop me a line. We'll see you on the next one.